วัสดีค่ะ This is Hello in Thai. I'm here to talk about our paper assessing Cicero diplomacy play. On November 22, 2022, Meta unveiled Cicero and AI that, according to the Journal Science, have mastered a board game called Diplomacy. The Washington Post noted that Cicero is skilled in negotiation, trickery, and forethought, while Forbes proclaimed Cicero as the first AI to outperform humans in strategies and negotiations, achieving human level performance in diplomacy. So, has Cicero truly reached human level diplomacy? And can AI diplomacy agents persuade and deceive? This paper replicates human versus Cicero games, adding additional measurements to confirm that although Cicero wins tons of games, it is not through deception or persuasion. It is because it plays diplomacy differently than humans do. So, what exactly is diplomacy, and why is AI like Cicero defeating humans such a big deal? Originally a tabletop board game, diplomacy has evolved and now can be played online on platforms like Web Diplomacy and Backstabber. It is a deterministic strategy game set at the start of 20th century, featuring seven major countries as highlighted. The objective is to capture as many supply centers as possible. Those territories I highlighted in white here. A player wins the game by gaining control of 18th of these supply centers. So how do we play this game? Each country begins with units. These units move around the board themselves or help other units either stay where they are or move. Unlike other board games, units from different players can help each other. For instance, if you are Austria, you can support Italy's movements. To make that happen, players need to talk to each other. In each turn, players negotiate before submitting their moves. During this time, players can forge alliances, collaborate, persuade, make commitments, or even deceive. So how does Cicero play diplomacy? At a glance, it excels. For instance, in one game from our study, Cicero played as France and secured the most supply center in the final season. Another impressive feat is Cicero's ability to create text that resembles humans. In this example, Cicero plays as France, asks England to bounce in the English Channel, and England does that. Historically, Facebook or Meta has been studying strategy and diplomacy since 2021, starting with Searchbot and Dora, then the Plodocus, which ultimately led to Cicero. These beat humans in a variant of the game without communication. So, the question is, is Cicero superhuman in both strategy and communication? or just strategy. To answer this, we had two to four humans play against three to five copies of the Cicero for 24 games. In these experiments, human knew Cicero was present, but didn't know which countries it controlled. Unlike back in eight all's previous experiments that just looks at who won, we asked the human players more questions. First, to see if Cicero is truly human level, that is, humans cannot identify whether a player is human or AI. We asked humans to classify every other player as either human or Cicero. Second, were players persuaded by the communication they receive, considering their intent? Building on prior research by Peskov et al., we examined messages to see if they were untruthful or perceived as untruthful by human recipients. Now let's dive into each task. The first task is whether humans can guess which players are computers. The popular perception was that Cicero plays and speaks like human well enough to pass as human. However, back in 8 all did not explicitly inform players they were playing with an AI in that particular game. In our setting, we explicitly informed players in each game that there were Cicero players and asked them to identify Cicero during the game. The second thing we asked players is what moves they were thinking about before they communicated. This is inspired by how Cicero internally works. Cicero messages are created by a conditional language model that uses the set of moves generated by its strategy engine. So its messages are consistent with what it does. We apply the same process to humans, tracking their initial orders before they start communicating each turn. So why is tracking intent important? It helps us evaluate whether they are persuaded after talking to others. We will talk more about the exact mechanics in a second. So let's talk about the first mechanic. To determine if players' words match their deeds, we need to extract the move from the messages. This is where abstract meaning representation, or AMR, comes into play. AMR capture who is doing what to whom in a sentence. I won't go into details here, so please check out the paper. Now let's get back to ours. We create a diplomacy-specific extension of AMR to capture a unique terminology and use that to extract when players talk about the current or the future moves in the game. Now that I have talked about how to extract moves, this is where we use it. Here's an overview of persuasion detection. We compare initial orders, orders communicated using the AMR parsing model, and final orders. In this example, Persuasion occurs when England convinces Germany to move to Sweden. 
Germany had initially planned to go to the North Sea, but changed its plan by the end of the turn, matching England's suggestion. Now that we understand persuasion, it is time for a deception. To understand if Cicero reaches human level deception, we need to know when deception happens. Deception is broad and nuanced. We don't hope to capture all of it. So we're only going to look at two examples of deceptions, lies and broken commitments. For lies, we follow the protocol of Pascal et al, where we ask humans to mark every message they send with whether they are lying and mark every message that they receive with whether they think it is a lie. For broken commitment, we use AMR to see if people actually do the things that they say they would do in the messages they sent to the other players. Now let's see an example of detecting broken commitment. We say Germany breaks its commitment when it's agreed to England that it's going to move its unit to Sweden, but instead moves to Norway in final orders. Those are tasks and mechanics in our work. Now we're going to talk about this error detection. We asked humans for whether they thought each of the other players was a bot. Humans armed with this information could reliably identify this error. We calculate F1 score by turn. At the first turn, it starts at 0.64 and increases to 0.81 by the end of the game. Experience in playing with this error also helps players identifying it. The yellow line shows results for the first timers and the red line for returning players. Even though the first timer is unfamiliar with Cicero, they did a great job identifying Cicero with F1 score 0.58 by the first turn and this rises to 0.77. Now we're going to talk about persuasion rate. We measure it, which is number of persuasions divided by the total number of the messages. And we distinguish cases where Cicero persuade another Cicero, Cicero persuade humans, humans persuade Cicero, and humans persuade humans. So this is our definition. Attempted persuasion is when someone sends a message asking the recipient to do something. This persuasion is successful when the receiver follows through and that's what the sender asks. In this chart, the attempted persuasion rate is in red, which is the number of persuasion attempted divided by the number of the messages. The yellow bar represents the successful persuasion rate, which is the number of the successful persuasions divided by the number of messages. In the results, Cicero and humans try to persuade at the same rate. However, humans successfully persuade other human players at 21.1% and Cicero at 8.6%, while Cicero has a lower success rate in persuading humans at 10.9% and Cicero at 7%. More importantly, Cicero broke commitments at a lower rate than humans. Remember, Cicero is trained to be honest about his order, so any deceptive behavior in communication is likely unintentional and possibly hallucinated from its language model. We measure the broken commitment rate among groups like persuasion, where a broken commitment rate is the number of broken commitments divided by the number of the messages. Now let's see the results. Cicero breaks commitment a little over half a percent with Cicero, and slightly higher with human at 0.76%. Humans breaks at a higher, but still very small rate. They break commitments that they have with Cicero at 1.2%, and highest to other human players at 1.5%. The error bars show one standard deviation range from the aggregated of interactions in every game. The country variances assigned to humans and Cicero can be solved in high error bars among all groups. Some powers like Italy need more collaboration and broken commitment than the others, just as Austria. Now let's see this from a human perspective. Human perceive that Cicero lies more often. Of all the Cicero messages that human receive, they identify 14.4% as lies, while identifying only 7.1% of all human messages. Humans perceive this error as lying more often, so they return the favor by lying to it more than human players. Of over 7,000 messages that humans sent out, they lie to this error 3.7%, while lying to humans only 0.6%. So in final, is this error at the human level in diplomacy? Let's compare this to sports. For Americans, we may see a robot that can hit a home run every time as a power hitter. But would you think of it as a human level baseball player? If it can only hit the ball without running the bases. A similar example is the famous Thai sport, Muay Thai. If a robot can kick any other player out of the ring but cannot move around, would we consider it a human level Muay Thai professional? I would say might, which is Thai for no. In conclusion, we argue that Cicero has yet to achieve human level performance in diplomacy, despite what you might have read online, such as in the Washington Post and Forbes, or in academic journals such as Science. Our study provides a holistic evaluation, not only to prove that Cicero can beat humans in strategy, but also to benchmark AI's emerging persuasion and deception. So for us, diplomacy is only a game. Future studies could extend these metrics, which is grounding and measuring success, to team-based settings and more real-world domains like fact-checking and misinformation. For instance, evaluating lies and broken commitment can be useful tools to discourage such behaviors in large language models. 
So that is all from us. Thank you for watching.